Meet ProGuide. Unique over-the-wire chronic dialysis catheter indicated for use in attaining long-term vascular access for hemodialysis and apheresis. It may be inserted percutaneously and is primarily placed in the internal jugular vein. ProGuide is the first chronic dialysis catheter designed exclusively for over-the-wire placement, eliminating the need for a tearaway sheath. My name is Dr. Jeffrey Siegel. I manage the Access Intervention Program for Dallas Nephrology Associates in an Integrated Access Management Center. Almost all of the patients that we care for here are part of our nephrology group. We have approximately 3,000 patients in the greater Dallas area with end-stage renal disease on dialysis and our physicians send the patients to us for care. We perform the procedures and then we're able to follow them as they return to their dialysis units over time. We enjoy testing different devices as they become available because our goal is to always pick the most appropriate devices for our patients. And the way to determine what the most appropriate device is is to see what's on the market at any given time and compare one device to another. Well, there are a variety of factors that will help us choose a catheter to use in a particular patient. I think the most important factor is the long-term patency of the device in that particular patient and what will be expected to give the patient the best flow rates and outcomes from a device. Secondarily, uh, and significantly second to that, is the ease of placement of the catheter. The easier the catheter is for us to place, the shorter the procedure and the less time that the patient is on the table. Our initial experience with the device, with the ProGuide, was 25 catheters for the evaluation. And shortly thereafter, we started to purchase them as our main a routine catheter of use. We've put in approximately 300 of the ProGuide catheters and in our observation the thing that makes the most difference is far fewer of these catheters have returned for replacement or revision than the other catheters that we had used previously suggesting to us that the ProGuide catheter is working far better uh, than the uh, catheters we had used. Prior to beginning uh, the use of the ProGuide catheter, we used a variety of different catheters from a number of manufacturers. We used a variety of the split tip catheters as well as the unibody catheters for uh, both right and left sided access. Some catheters take a time or two, a treatment or two, to begin to get to their optimal flow rate. Some catheters never reach flow rates above 300 or 350 cc's uh, per minute. And that's one of the reasons that we were investigating and continue to investigate all the catheters that are being released. Flow rates with this catheter are excellent. We're routinely getting 400 cc's per minute and above uh, with routine use of this catheter. And we're seeing those flow rates initially upon the first dialysis treatment, not necessarily waiting for the catheters to soften and settle in. Our patients are dialyzed almost uniformly immediately after the catheter is placed in our dialysis center that's attached to our facility. Clinically speaking, I think that the ProGuide represents an improvement in catheter design. I'm very fond of the over-the-wire placement system. We don't have to use a peel-away introducer sheath to get the device where we want it to go and that lets us use a smaller entry hole in the patient's vein thereby causing less damage. Well, To my knowledge this is the only catheter that was designed from the ground up for over-the-wire use and to me that's an improvement because we can avoid the use of a peel-away introducer sheath which dilates the hole in the vein larger than is required for catheter placement. The peel-away sheath was the standard way of putting in a catheter until now, and we had no problem doing it that way, but a peel-away sheath by its nature enlarges the vein slightly more than you need to put the device in successfully, therefore you have a predilection for bleeding and for other venous complications. Our goal is to put a hole in the vein no larger than is needed to get the catheter in place correctly. Well, there are two things about this catheter that I think that are important to know that are slightly different than when placing other catheters. Because there's a stylet in the catheter with a guide wire through it, you end up with what is called a knuckle or an, a flexion point where the catheter enters the venotomy site in the neck. It's important to get the, the venotomy site open enough so that the knuckle goes in smoothly. You can do that by using a small instrument to perform blunt dissection. It's very important to get a nice pocket for this knuckle to lie. 
Then what you can do is by pressing on the knuckle as you withdraw and turn the catheter approximately half a turn, the knuckle will pop beneath the skin and form a nice smooth C-shape where there'll be no kinking of the catheter. It's not really possible to emphasize enough how important it is to perform a good blunt dissection at the venotomy site so that as the catheter knuckle uh, enters the skin, it forms a smooth, unobstructed uh, C-shape. Well, exchanging this catheter is extremely simple. The fact, again, that the catheter is designed to go over a, uh, a guide wire makes it easy to remove the old catheter over a wire, leave the wire in position, and slide the new catheter into place through the existing tunnel. It's an extremely easy procedure to do. The reason we use this catheter is that our patient's outcomes are very, very good. I noticed very early on, even in the first 25 we were doing for the evaluation, that the patients were not coming back as frequently as we'd seen for catheter exchanges or catheter revisions. In fact, none of them came back during the study period at all. The major benefit to me is the flow rate is high, the patient return rate for malfunctioning catheters is very, very low, and the catheters are easy to place.